Welcome to The Fraud Files. Before we dive into today's episode, make sure to hit that follow button. Don't miss out on unraveling the mysteries with us every week. If you're a CPA like me, you can earn CPE credit for listening to this podcast. All you have to do is answer the course questions at flowcademy.com. That's F-L-O-Q-A-D-E-M-Y.com. The link is in the show description. Enjoy. Previously on The Fraud Files. The SEC formerly and permanently bars Don J. Bennett from acting as a broker or investment advisor. A lawsuit, Don? How are we supposed to pay these legal fees? This is insane. You can't go after one of the biggest names in tech just because you're not happy with your search results. Sorry, Brad. I must have forgot that you passed the bar and became a fucking lawyer! I may not be a lawyer, but I do have enough common sense to know where this road ends for us, even if you can't see it. Episode 5, FBI Raids and Severed Tongues. Uh, hello, officers. May I help you? Your investment advisor is running a Ponzi scheme. Who did you say you were? I'm FBI agent Keith Custer. Nice to meet you, Agent Custer. But I think there's been a misunderstanding. My investment advisor is Don J. Bennett. We've been following Don for months now. You're probably mixing her up with someone else. Don's one of the top financial advisors in the country. All based on lies. You definitely have the wrong woman. Have you met Dawn before? She's a professional. Top of the line. I've invested most of my life savings with her. And I've been making great returns. Have you ever seen any of those returns? Received them in cash? Well, I mean, some, but not all. I'll receive them when I need them, after I retire. And Dawn's been keeping me posted on them. I know exactly how my investments are doing. She's very transparent. Have you ever verified what Don's told you? Why would I do that? She's a licensed professional. That's the point. I don't need to verify. I can trust her. The returns she's told you about are likely fabricated. I'm sorry, Carl. This can't be easy to digest. I, I, I don't believe this. I don't believe you. I need proof. If it's any consolation, you're not the only one she's been doing this to. So the FBI started contacting Dawn's clients, like Carl, her biggest investor. Many of these people had hundreds of thousands of dollars invested with her. They'd worked with her for years, and now someone, albeit a professional, was coming in and telling them this was all a lie. What would you do? I'd probably ask for proof as well. There's a saying. It's easier to con a man than to convince a man he's been conned. Exactly. And that's what Agent Custer was working towards. Brad, can I speak to Dawn, please? Oh, she's sick and can't come to the phone right now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Could she give me a call back when she's back in the office? I want to take some of my money out and, uh... Hi, Brad. I just wanted to check in on Dawn and her illness. I know when I called two weeks ago, she was under the weather. How is she now? Unfortunately, still very sick. Oh, that's a long time. Has she gone to the doctor? Yes, and they're worried it's something serious. Oh, my goodness. I will pray for her. Thank you, Barbara. I'll have her call you the moment she recovers. In the meantime, could you help me take some money out? I don't need a lot of it, just 200000 or so. Hi, Brad. It's Carl just following up again. Even if I can't speak to Don, can you help me with taking some money out? Don's in China. She's traveling on business. <sighs> this is the seventh time we're calling about your tardy lease payments. Brad, where is Don? Where the fuck is Don, Brad? Hello? Oh, thank God. They hung up. Don and Brad had an extensive excuse list. It was methodical and planned out. Different clients were told different stories, and a lot of them didn't even match. So how did the FBI learn this? They would have had to... Wiretap, <laughs> obviously. Exactly. But in order to wiretap, the FBI needed some help, specifically the help of one of Dawn's most trusting and loyal clients. Come in. Uh, Carl, how are you? 
I've been better, Agent Custer. A little nervous about what you're gonna tell me. Now take a seat. You're gonna wanna be sitting for this. What's going on, Agent Custer? What did Dawn's office tell you? Well, she's been sick, the poor thing. Then she's been in China for work-related travel. She works herself so hard, you know- What if I told you that she was never in China? She has a whole business in China. Th that would be ridiculous. Of course she's in China. But where else would she be? Not in China. Do you have proof? Agent Custer was able to prove to Carl that Dawn had been lying. He wiretapped her office and gave Carl financial proof that Dawn had been in Maryland the whole time that she claimed to be in China. What kind of financial proof? Credit card statements showing charges in Maryland during the dates of her alleged travel to China. Wow. Who knew accounting could come in handy in an FBI case? It happens way more than you'd think. Uh-huh. So now Carl believed the FBI. Yes. He realized they were telling the truth. The jig was up. So what did he do? We're getting there. In the meantime, let's check in on Dawn. She's sick. She's unavailable. She's at an appointment. She's in China. 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 China! Brad, we only have to hold out a little longer. I couldn't do this without you. Okay, Don. But I can only make excuses for so long. This can't go on forever. We need to give these people their money. They've been asking for months, some of them. I know, Brad. I hear you. Dawn had to think outside of the box. The loan didn't work. Her investor funds were running low. She got creative. And Agent Custer breaks it down for us in the affidavit. I knew that BGFS had fallen behind on its monthly lease payments and needed $350,000 to bring them current. It was around this time that Don made a payment to GMA USA LLC, a firm which specializes in what they term merchant cash advances, which I believe to be another form of short-term lending in which DJBennett.com has engaged, again, symptomatic of a company experiencing extreme financial duress. What are merchant cash advances? A merchant cash advance is not a loan but an advance based on the future revenues or credit card sales of a business. A small business can apply for a merchant cash advance and have the advance deposited into its account fairly quickly. Why didn't she just go to a bank and get a loan? Why a merchant cash advance? <laughs> she was probably running out of banks to go to. Exactly. Merchant cash advance providers evaluate risk and weigh credit criteria differently than a traditional banker might. A merchant cash advance provider looks at a company's daily credit card receipts to determine if the business can pay back the advance in a timely manner. It, so basically, the small business is selling a portion of future credit card sales to acquire capital immediately. But the rates on a merchant cash advance have to be higher, right? Rates on a merchant cash advance are definitely typically higher than other small business loan options, sometimes higher than triple digit annualized interest rates. A merchant cash advance provider will often approve an advance for a business that might not qualify for a business loan, but has a steady influx of credit card payments. <laughs> The genius of Dawn truly was her ability to use various methods of financial strategies to get money. I think I wouldn't even know where to start with a merchant cash advance. Well, an agreement is made between the small business and the merchant cash advance provider regarding the advance amount, payback amount, timing, and holdback percentage. Once an agreement is made, the advance is transferred to the business's bank account in exchange for a future percentage of receivables or credit card receipts. A holdback percentage? Each day, an agreed upon percentage of the daily revenues or credit card receipts are withheld to pay back the merchant cash advance. This is called a holdback and will continue until the advance is paid in full. Access to a business owner's merchant account eliminates the collateral required for a traditional small business loan. Because repayment is based upon a percentage of the daily balance in the merchant account, the more transaction a business does, the faster they're able to repay the advance. Don's business doesn't seem like it's getting many daily business transactions. It seems like her alleged business model is less frequent transactions, but in larger amounts. Exactly. And what's interesting is, should transactions be lower on any given day, the draw from the merchant account will also be less. 
This means during times of slow business, the business's payback is slower since it's relative to their incoming merchant account deposits. So they got the money and then didn't have to pay it back as quickly because they didn't have a lot of transactions. And that also probably meant the interest was accruing sizably since the advance wasn't being paid off. Like if you don't pay off your credit card. Absolutely. And on top of all the financial struggles Dawn was dealing with on her office lease, Dawn found herself in a deeper hole when she received an email from the Dallas Cowboys. Last chance payment owed, please reply. Pending lawsuit, fuck! Jay, I just tried to call you, but was left on hold and then was disconnected. I just received your last two emails as I am now in Hong Kong, but am flying out tomorrow to the US and will be back in the office late next week to take care of the remaining obligation to you. What I don't understand, is that I told you via email that I would be back in the States by June 2017 and would take care of the remaining amount by the end of the month. So I am not sure what changed or did I misunderstand. Please advise. Shit, shit, shit. Reply all. Goodness, Jason, you know part of my company is in China, and I don't have access to my US-based emails there due to hacking and vicious Chinese viruses. One day, I hope to be able to get US-based emails in China, but today it still isn't safe. So again, just know I will get you the remaining amount by the end of next week. And by the way, I really do appreciate the special attention you give me to help remind me. Speak with you once I get back. I need to go to bed. It is 3 a.m. in the morning and I am beat and sent. <sighs> <laughs> double emailing in two minutes. It's like double texting. Major red flag. She's clearly spiraling. Dawn's facing a lawsuit from the Dallas Cowboys. She's late on her lease payments. Not to mention she knows she's under investigation from the SEC. So yes, the spiraling has begun. What happens when you enter a lease agreement that you can't pay? Do they just break the lease? Well, Dawn never found out because she actually did end up paying off her account over the course of August 2016 to July 2017 using... Uh, let me guess. Investor money? Bingo. But as we all know, Dawn cared less about her accounts payable and more about her image. And that image was about to start showing major cracks. Brad, don't worry. I will get you the best lawyer. I'll handle all the legal fees. You don't have to stress about a thing. You just say what we've discussed. But Don, it's the SEC. It's a sworn testimony. I know, I know, Brad. But we'll get through this. Why don't you take the rest of the day off and relax? Hmm? I'll check in on you later. Now, Dawn's dealing with the stress of an SEC investigation, and little did she know. The FBI was also keeping a close watch on her every move. And now, they're about to get a new edge in their investigation. Look, Carl, I know this hasn't been easy on you. You could say that again. This has been the most difficult period of my life. I half wish you hadn't told me the truth about Dawn. How am I supposed to rebuild my financial wealth at this point in my life, Agent Custer? I hear you, but you might not have to if we get Dawn. If we can prove that she's been running a Ponzi scheme, we can send her to prison and have you paid back. Is that possible? It could be, but I'm gonna need your help. Carl ended up agreeing to help Agent Custer. He placed various calls to Dawn that Agent Custer wiretapped, and these were eventually used as evidence against Dawn in court. Dawn speaking. Dawn, it's Carl. How are you? I'm okay, Dawn. 
I've been hearing some things about the market. And you want to know how your investments are doing. And I want to know how my investments are doing. Your investments? Carl, you're doing amazing. Your returns are off the charts. Between you and me, they're better than any one of my other clients. Really? Oh, absolutely. Do you think it might be time for me to take out some of those returns? Maybe take a Euro trip this summer? Take some out? Well, uh, of course the idea is that you'd take it out eventually. That's why we're earning you these great returns. Could I take some of it out this week? This week? That, <laughs> that's, that's rather sudden, Carl. And unfortunately, the, the ROIs on your investment are slightly stagnant this week. And, and uh, removing just any capital investment might put them at risk of an overall loss. Sorry, Don. I, I get a little lost in your financial jargon sometimes. So you're advising me not to take it out? It's too risky to take it out, yes. Okay. What if I wanted to take the risk? I wouldn't advise it. In fact, I would advise against it. Completely against it. Don, I want to take some of my money out. Carl, no. No. I mean, I think you could keep it in at least until October 31st. I want it now. Carl, look, you've got such a high return on your equity. To pull it out now would be to lose thousands and thousands of dollars. I, I simply won't allow it. Oh, there goes my other line. Let's pick up this conversation later, please. Did you get all of that? Every word. Meanwhile, at a butcher shop in Chevy Chase, Maryland, a familiar face walked through the door. Oh, Don! Third time this week, huh? Just pack it up, please, and keep your voice down. You know, I've never met anyone who had such a craving for tongue. I mean, is this a new diet? Is it low carb? Tell me about it. I would never eat these. Wow. I've heard of stress eating, but that whew, takes it to a new level. So, keto? Well, uh, she said she wasn't eating them. Well, she wasn't. And the FBI would get to the bottom of that soon enough. But first, Agent Custer was busy following up on an urgent matter with the judge. I, Magistrate Judge Thomas M. DeGirolamo, hereby authorize an additional email search warrant for Don J. Bennett and her related entities. And that gave him full access to Don's emails, plus clear insight into how she was handling the investigation with the SEC. Pursuant to an additional email search warrant authorized by United States Magistrate Judge Thomas M. DiGiolamo on July 18, 2017, I obtained a series of emails Bennett sent to herself on June 16, 2017, a few days before Brad Macho provided sworn testimony to the SEC. Those emails, all sent from Bennett to Bennett, read as follows. At 7.57 p.m. Brad, I think this is going to end up a lot worse than you expected. If you are bound to do this, it is certain they are going to come after you for no good reason. But that is not going to stop them. At 7.59 p.m. They are going to goad you into something that isn't true, that works to save your skin. At 8.15 p.m. Be nice, but confused. Be nice, but be incompetent. At 8.17 p.m. Be a little incompetent, a little confused. At 8.58 p.m. You need to plead temporary insanity. So Dawn was sending these emails to herself? That's correct. Maybe Brad had access to her email account and she was sending messages to him. That could be true. She could have been thinking no one would track her emails to herself. In addition to her emails, Agent Custer also got access to her phone records. On June 16, 2017, at 6.36 p.m., approximately an hour before Bennett sent herself the first email, Brad called her. That call lasted approximately 18 minutes. From these emails, it appears that Bennett is emailing her self-notes about coaching Brad for his upcoming SEC testimony. Whoa, this is getting messy. This is really where it's evident to us that Dawn is losing it. She's getting extremely paranoid. She started calling Brad incessantly. On June 17th, 2017, the Saturday prior to Brad's testimony on Monday, 
Bennett had approximately 18 phone contacts with him, ranging in duration from one minute to 29 minutes. On June 18th, 2017, she had two phone contacts, totaling 32 minutes with Brad. Hello? Brad, it's done. Look, I know there's a lot at stake here. We really have to be careful with our words. Don't forget to mention I was away for business in China for three months this year. Got it. Hello? Brad, we need to be believable, but also sound like we don't know what's going on, or, or we could speak more technically and really show them we know what we're doing, and then they'll get scared, and then they'll let us go. Got it. Brad, make sure you do not forget to mention that I was away for four months in China earlier this year, not three. <sighs> Got it, Don. Maybe she really cared about how this went for Brad. It says in the affidavit that Don paid Brad's legal fees. We have to remember that it's Don's company. And if he gets in trouble, she does as well. Dawn didn't really have an emotional connection with money, remember? It wasn't like it was her life savings she was spending on Brad. It was everyone else's life savings. Either way, she did spend the money on getting Brad's testimony ready. The question is, did she trust the preparation? Why do you ask that? You'll see. On this 19th day of June 2017, we are hearing Bradley Macho's testimony in the investigation of... I'm sorry, Mr. Macho, do you have something better to be doing? Uh, absolutely not. Apologies, please, uh, carry on. Jeez, <gasps> Don, I'm on my lunch break. I was in there for two hours getting grilled. What's so urgent that couldn't wait? I just wanted to check to see how it was going. You interrupted the proceedings with your call. That's how it's going. Just like always, I'm here trying to clean up your mess, and you still can't get out of my way. Even though she paid top dollar to get Brad ready for this testimony, she clearly didn't trust it or him. But it didn't matter because what happened next changed everything. Apologies for my tardiness. I was dealing with a hung jury. Agent Custer, how may I help you? Your Honor... This is in regards to my case on Don J. Bennett. I've done some wiretapping where I've caught Bennett making false statements directly in violation of the United States Code. I'd like to request access to her home in Chevy Chase, Maryland, to put this matter to rest. Granted. Alpha team is in place, standing by outside of Ms. Bennett's residence. On your order, sir. Over. Copy. Beta team, what's your status? Over. Beta team is in position at residence two. Over. Copy. On my order. Three, two, one. All teams go. FBI, put your hands up! We have a search warrant! Get on the ground now! Move, 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 team! Room one, clear. Room two, clear. Room three, clear. All rooms are clear. Residence two is clear. Over. Copy. Looks like no one's home. Carry on. Sir, you gotta see this. Oh my god. That's the most shoes I think I've ever seen. Inventory for the site? Negative, sir. These are all the same size. Sir, we need your eyes on something. Coming. Sir, we found two large freezers, and, well, we've never seen anything like this before. Jesus, that reeks. Is it human? We don't believe so, sir. We'll have the lab look at it, but at first glance, seems to be some sort of livestock. And what do the letters mean? Not sure yet, but... We'll get on it right away. Sir, we recovered this in the study. Huh. Hold your tongue spell. So the tongues were for a spell. <laughs> exactly. Following the FBI raid of Dawn's two residences and office, Agent Custer detailed all of his findings in the affidavit. In Bennett's residence, agents also found evidence regarding Bennett's guilt and guilty knowledge. Records reviewed as part of this investigation indicate that she spent fraud proceeds for various personal expenses. For instance, on November 22, 2016, the DJB Holdings Bank account received a $600,000 wire from individual number four. Prior to receiving that wire, the account balance was $55,085. On November 23, 2016, Bennett made a payment of $159,399 to American Express. The previous month, Bennett had used this card for a variety of expenses that are seemingly personal in nature. In Bennett's Chevy Chase penthouse, 
agents found a wealth of personal effects demonstrative of her lifestyle. Also in the search of her residence, agents discovered instructions for placing individuals under a hoodoo spell, which placed an open source investigation I understand to be synonymous with a voodoo spell. The instructions were called Beef Tongue Shut Up Hoodoo Spell, and allegedly were to cause the individuals under spell to shut up about Bennett. In handwritten notes on Don J. Bennett's styled stationery, along with other directions such as slitting open animal tongue, the instructions called on the spellcaster to state the name of the individual on whom to cast the spell, followed by, I cross and cover you, come under my command. I command you to hold your tongue. The residential search also uncovered biographical information for at least three SEC attorneys working on the SEC investigation into Bennett. Consistent with the instructions on how to cast a hoodoo spell, agents discovered in her residence two freezers containing dozens of sealed mason jars with identifying information for the same SEC attorneys, suggesting that Bennett had many times cast a hoodoo spell in hopes of paranormally silencing the SEC attorneys investigating her. Photographs of the freezer's contents are included below, with many of the sealed containers visible, complete with the initials of SEC attorneys written on the lids. Hoodoo? Like voodoo? Is this the same thing as Pooja.net? Actually, no. Pooja.net was mostly rituals based on Hinduism. The beef tongue spell actually was based on hoodoo, whereas voodoo is an actual religion. Hoodoo, on the other hand, is folk magic. It is a set of spiritual practices and beliefs that were created by slaves in the southern United States from various African traditions, Christianity, and elements of indigenous botanical knowledge. Wait, wait what happened to Pooja.net? Well... Ben, it's Dawn. Please call me back. Ben, it's me, Dawn. Please call me back, please. Ben, I need your help. Please call me when you hear this. Ben Collins at Pooja.net was contacted by the FBI. He didn't realize where the money was coming from, and once he found out, he cut off communication. Dawn took matters into her own hands. She started doing spells on her own, likely from information she found on Google. This is, this is, I, I'm at a loss here. <laughs> You're not the only one. You're saying they found what at Dawn's apartment? That's insane. I can't believe she'd gone this far off the rails. The Dawn I knew was a smart, reasonable woman. Meanwhile, I'm trusting this woman with everything I got, and she's spending it on designer shoes and magic. Oh, poor Carl. Indeed. Now, based on the FBI's findings in Dawn's two penthouses and office, Agent Custer had all he needed to take her down. Based on the facts set forth herein, I respectfully submit that there is probable cause to believe that Bennett has committed violations of the United States Code Sections 1343, 1344, and 1014. Therefore, I request the issuance of a criminal complaint and an arrest warrant. Your affiant has signed this document under oath as to all assertions and allegations contained herein, and states that its contents are true and correct to the best of his knowledge. Agent A. Custer, Special Agent, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Department of Justice. Thank you, Agent Custer. This has been subscribed and sworn to me, Charles B. Day, United States Magistrate Judge, District of Maryland, on this 24th day of August, 2017. Go get her, Agent. Meanwhile, Dawn was renting a vacation home in Arizona, and as the SEC investigation was surmounting, her paranoia had reached new heights. I cross and cover you. Come under my command. I command you to hold your tongue. <clears throat> this is Agent Custer. Over. We have eyes on target. Alpha team, stand by and wait for my order. Go! 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 Next time on The Fraud Files. The district court finds Don J. Bennett convicted of 17 financial crimes and sentenced to 240 months of imprisonment followed by five years of supervised release. Guilty on all 17 counts? This is fucking ridiculous. I'm going to go to fucking prison. I'm innocent. I'm fucking innocent. This is a mistake. I'm not supposed to end up here. 
Love today's episode or have suggestions? Rate us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast and leave us a review. Your feedback helps us improve and makes our community stronger. 